Thanks to NordVPN for helping make today's video possible. Okay, so Wi-Fi is one of my favorite things and I've got two routers right here. One from Ubiquiti and one from Netgear and they both have something in common and that's Wi-Fi 6 and that's what today's video is all about. So this is the Amplify Alien. I'm gonna put this on the floor for now because we're not gonna be touching it in today's video. It's a Wi-Fi 6 router. So is this Netgear AX12. And I actually wanna go ahead and talk about Wi-Fi 6 today, a few of the differences, and test it out and see what's going on. I've got a Samsung Galaxy S10 here which has Wi-Fi 6 support. So we'll see what all the hype is about and I'll try and give you guys some information on Wi-Fi 6. Okay, this is the Nighthawk AX12, 12 stream Wi-Fi router. This thing as you can see it's a bit of a boss it looks a bit mental <laughs> whoa look at this thing well paper thin ethernet cable here and a chunky ass power brick obviously to power this beast of a router okay so what is wi-fi 6 and essentially wi-fi 6 is just clever marketing terms well it actually just tries to make things easier so wi-fi 5 is actually wi-fi ac which is what we're currently all using wi-fi 4 is wireless N, so 802.11 N, and Wi-Fi 6 is the new standard, so that is how it works. You've got Wi-Fi 4, which is N, 5, which is AC, and then 6, which is Wi-Fi 6. So what is Wi-Fi 6, and how does it differ from wireless AC? So essentially Wi-Fi 6 is improving on Wi-Fi where it needs to get better, so that is actually having more clients connected to a single access point in a certain area. So let's say if you're in a football stadium, I mean, where does Wi-Fi not work? It's when you're in public, public Wi-Fi hotspots, when there's lots of people trying to connect. Nine times out of 10, it works at home, doesn't it? This is actually a Wi-Fi 6 card and the Wi-Fi 6 logo is actually on there. That is the Wi-Fi 6 logo. And I bought this for my computer so I can test all of this stuff out. Now, I'm gonna get a little bit technical with you guys. It uses a feature called OFDMA, which essentially splits up a wireless channel, and Wi-Fi works in channels, and it allows more data per channel, essentially, in a nutshell. Now, you can go deeper than that, but on the surface, that is essentially what's happening. And as a result of this, if your, well, radios or access point and all of your clients are Wi-Fi 6 compatible, you can have up to 30 clients connected without any sort of decrease in speed, which is pretty nice. And it's, well, all well and good saying that on paper, but we'll have to test these things to see how they work in practice. Now, a few more features of Wi-Fi 6, uh, whilst I've been reading online, it actually has a feature called MU MIMO, or multi-user MIMO. And a lot of you with your head switch on will be saying, Alex, that's a feature of 802.11ac, or Wi-Fi 5, the current generation of Wi-Fi. And a lot of you will be correct. However, multi-user MIMO essentially means multiple people can talk to the access point at once. And it only comes at the moment in variants of four. So four devices can talk at once. With Wi-Fi 6, it improves on that twice fold, so you get eight devices devices talking at once. Pretty nifty. Okay, so the last thing now we've got to go and do is test this stuff. Now, I would go ahead and do some controlled tests but Wi-Fi is never in a controlled environment ever. So what would be the point in doing a controlled test? I've got a five gigahertz access point here, and then we've got our new Wi-Fi 6 router, which is gonna be there. And I'm gonna put them right next to each other. Well, probably about half a meter apart. We're gonna go through into the office, which is a brick wall away, and test that new Wi-Fi 6 card in there and do some speed tests between this router and this access point. Wi-Fi 5. Wi-Fi 6. Right, so I've connected our new Wi-Fi card that we just installed in my computer, the Wi-Fi 6 card, to the Wi-Fi network Mars Media, which is my original access point, and I'm gonna go ahead and run a speed test. Now, we only get 60, 60 odd meg into this office, so let's just see. I mean, we're brick walls through. The brick, the brick walls in this office are very, very thick. And as you can see, we're only pulling about seven, eight meg there. Um, that is absolutely disappointing. We usually have an access point in this room, by the way, but I've turned it off because that wouldn't be fair. I wanted it to use the access point in there. So as you can see, eight meg through a brick wall. Okay, so this is a mouthful, but this network here, number five, is the five gigahertz network that's in the wireless six spectrum. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, 
put the password in, get connected to this network. Now, let's see if the results speak for themselves or not. We got about 10 meg and about 35 millisecond ping last time. So, okay, ping is already better. I'm already happy. Hey, there we go. That was much more responsive as well. It was like a, a junk straight up. So like I tell you guys, I know these are very unimpressive speeds, even for five gigahertz, but I, I, str I can't stress this enough. The walls in this building are extremely thick. The, the fact that we're managing to pull a solid 20, <laughs> that's obviously not right, but a solid 25 megabits <laughs> per second through a brick wall. There you go, this, yeah, the upload no, should be nowhere near the, the download. Um, but there you go. Yeah, it's definitely better. Let's go and test it on the Samsung Galaxy S10, is S10? S10 5G. So with a little bit of 4K crop, hopefully you guys can see there the Wi-Fi 6 logo on this S10. It's just a little 6 next to the Wi-Fi logo. So if I swipe up here, we'll go ahead and launch a speed test. Okay, so there we go, Wi-Fi 6 in the room below. That's pretty much maxing out our office's internet connection in the room below. And like I say, grade two listed building, the floors and walls in this office are just absolutely solid. So the fact we're getting 60 meg, even in the floor below on Wi-Fi 6, is brilliant. And then just for the sake of sanity, I'm gonna connect back to the ubiquity access point just on the five gigahertz band and do a speed test. Yeah. Um, <laughs> look at that, nine meg. Look, it seems to be like, it literally looks as if it's capping at nine. Just stopping. That's absolutely mental. Well, there we are. That's a uh, Wi-Fi 5G in an old grade two listed building versus Wi-Fi 6. So let us know your thoughts. Okay, it's that time again. Thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring today's TechFlow video. A VPN is great for watching region restricted things like Netflix. So if there's a show over in America and you're in the UK and you want to watch that show, well, Netflix will restrict you. Turn on your VPN and it will pretend that you're in America. Voila, you can watch the show. It's also great if you use public Wi-Fi because if you didn't know, public Wi-Fi is a little bit messy and people can sort of snoop on what you're doing. With a VPN, it hides what you're doing. It's protection. Fun fact, many people from China use VPNs to get round the Great Firewall of China to access the entire internet and NordVPN works in China too. If you guys want to give them a go, go to nordvpn.com forward slash techflow and if you use our code, you'll get 81% off a three year plan, you'll get four extra months just for free and you'll get a free password manager worth about $200. That's nordvpn.com forward slash techflow. Okay, so I'm into the configuration page of this Nighthawk wireless router. This is all as new to me as it is you guys. So I thought what I'd do is log on here and we can go through this together. So interesting to note, much like the jump between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, Wi-Fi 6 isn't a new gigahertz if that makes sense. So you don't have a separate SSID like 2.4 gigahertz, five gigahertz, and oh, this is my Wi-Fi 6 SSID, so you connect to this if you wanted Wi-Fi 6. Wi-Fi 6 essentially just improves on 2.4 and five gigahertz, or both of them together, if the router and or client can accept that, which will give you an aggregate throughput of something, well, it says down here on the five gigahertz, uh, yeah, 4,803 megabytes. Obviously, these are just ballpark numbers and real world performance will differ. So if you go into the advanced tab and then wireless setup on this Nighthawk, as you can see, the first tick box is enable AX. This Wi-Fi mode will enable AX features such as OF, DMA, like we discussed earlier. Now, if you scroll down to the five gigahertz, it says here, Wi-Fi five gigahertz, 802.11, A, N, AC, and then obviously AX2. But Wi-Fi 6 is absolutely brilliant because it's just simply improving on what was already there and already pretty good anyway. I mean, if you wanted your range, you can fall back to 2.4, albeit you'll lose out on a little bit of speed, but hopefully that will be fixed now with Wi-Fi AX. And now as well on your five gigahertz band, you can have AX support and you're gonna get all of those added benefits like I mentioned earlier. And here's a few others too. Now, whether you knew this or not, radios or access points like this one right here, they work in a fair way. So if there's another access point screaming over here, this access point will wait its turn before it sends its packets to its client device. Now, with a new feature in Wi-Fi AX called BSS Color, it essentially knows that those packets in the air are coming from a different access point, so to ignore them 
and carry on doing what it was doing because it knows that those packets were coming from a totally separate access point and probably going to a totally different client. Does that make sense? It will make things so much faster. And there's another feature called target wake up time. Now this depends if the actual client device like this S10 has it right here, but essentially what this is gonna do is save battery on devices that have batteries like your phones. It just knows and will modulate down if it doesn't need to send loads of data, or if it does need to send loads of data, like download a big game or a high quality YouTube video, it can ramp it back up again. So yeah, it's pretty cool in every single direction of the area of Wi-Fi. You know, lots of people, crowded places, you're gonna get better throughput. You want better range on 2.4 gigahertz, but you still want speed? Well, that's improved too. You want better battery life on your phones? Well, here, have that as well. I think Wi-Fi 6 is a much needed upgrade and it doesn't seem like the change from wireless N to AC, but there's enough features here that make you think in a widespread environment, hmm, this is gonna make Wi-Fi actually work. So there you guys go. This has been our video testing out Wi-Fi 6. I bought a Wi-Fi card to test all of this. And yeah, we have some Wi-Fi 6 routers here. One from Netgear and this one from Ubiquiti. This is called the Amplify Alien. Looks really, really cool. And this thing looks like a boss too. So if you guys enjoyed this video, a light rating would be much appreciated. If you wanna check out our other networking videos, there's loads more on the channel. But for now, my name's been Alex and this has been TechFlow. And we'll see you in the next one. Adios.